I think Run the Jewels really became our creative outlet and it's also, you know, you get, you get to a certain point in your life and you, you seek out joy and, you know, in this yeah. business and fun yeah. and, and when you find that, you, you don't really just give it up, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, you want to follow you know. inspiration, not be forced. Exactly. It sounds exactly. like a sweetheart story. You're talking about relationship for real, like. Yeah, 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 yeah. For real. If it wasn't that, then it wouldn't, you know, it wouldn't be this, yeah. And like speaking of inspiration, I know you're you're an active self here. You are you're a super advocate of no. you're in the you're in politics a lot. You, I know you spoke up for Bernie. I don't you know, want to be though. I want to really just be smoking weed. And but when you have a mouthpiece it. and people care about. What I you do. Say. I, I do feel compelled to do my part. And you all use your platform very well. Yeah, oh, thank you. And and um, as far as ULP, I know that's what he does. That's like a forefront that he does sure. outside of it. Sure. And outside of music, is there anything you feel passionate about? Um, you know, I think that me and Mike really do connect uh, uh, in terms of like how we feel about the, the human condition and, mm -hmm. and I think that that's one of the reasons why we can do this together. Um, Mike is more independently active and, and, and political when, when he's on his downtime. I'm, I'm, I'm in the studio making our records <laughs> and get, get, getting beats together to, to, to make sure that this guy has a, has a, has a dope beat to, to, to say what he has to say and, and, and for me too, but um, you know, this is my life, music is, is my life. And, and, and so, but through this music, we get to kind of speak our hearts a little bit between making stupid jokes and just trying to be dope rappers. We, we, we find this common ground where we can, we can say things that we care about. Um, and it wasn't a conflict, you know? And in fact, if anything, me and him hooking up kind of gave us a, a sort of a new breath of a, a, a perspective on the way to talk about certain things that were important to us and our, our politics our, and our hearts really line up so I like that and we get you get sort of two perspectives and two different ideas coming with the same intention which is basically that we you know we um, we're rappers first and foremost we're fans and, and lovers of rap music and we just want to make dope rap music but at the same time we're men and and and, and, and we'll, we'll stand up and speak from our hearts and I, I like having two men's from different cultural backgrounds. I like having that perspective and seeing what, what comes out of that. And uh, it feels powerful to me, you know, so. Yeah. It's, it's, it's two, two men from like, that have extremely long careers. Like I remember being a kid and seeing company flow videos with the living graffiti going up yeah, the wall yeah, and stuff. Yeah. And uh, what I want to know is, is what's like the, been the hardest thing, the most challenging thing to adapt to in like today's music scene because to be in the game for so long now you have like the internet you have social media you have so many other ways to you have to adapt to well those have all been those have all been allies to us you know we, we we've been we've been kind of i think emancipated from a lot of the bullshit that you have to go through that we me and mike experienced we were always trying to do our own thing like i was always doing an independent label i was always putting my i, I was kind of always trying to ignore the rules a little bit uh, I think that the internet has allowed us and a lot of other artists to get really close and, um, to their fans really quickly and to eliminate a lot of the middlemen. Um, so I never look at it like a problem. I, adapting isn't the problem. The, you know, the problem is other people taking too long to adapt. You know? We put our records out for free. We also sell them. You can't get any more modern a, a business model than that. And I think a lot of the people that, even distributors and people that we were fucking with when we first started this whole thing, we're like, no, we're giving it away for free. They were like, you're crazy. You're out of your minds. And we were like, trust us. Let's, you know, this is this is the right thing to do. And and now, that's not a problem anymore. Now everyone kind of sees that as a normal, you know. So, I don't, personally, I don't really, I don't see it as a problem adapting to the shit. I'm excited about where it's going and. Um, there was a big t period of time where professional musicians had a tough time figuring out how they were gonna take their business through that technology and how it was gonna come out on the other end. And there was like, a, there was a little bit, a, a, a bit of time where people were feeling a, bit, a little lost. Like, where are we gonna make the money, you know? How are we gonna sustain ourselves to, to have and a career? The was booming, but the business was dying. All the old school models started dropping. Mm -hmm. So people like me and Mike were on it already for the new school model. You know? right. The most important thing to adapt though is your style. Like don't never sleep. You know what I'm saying? E40, 30 years in. He celebrated his 50th, 50th year on this earth, man. And his style been sugar since 87. It's been sweet. It's been ill. 
and with every turn and grow of Oakland and street music over the last 30 years, he been in the midst of it or on the forefront of it or somewhere in the mix. And it's because his style is, is on his don't die. And I think that ultimately you can adapt to technology, you can adapt to fast, you can adapt to all this shit, but if your style whack, you whack. And we not whack. And that's that's the that's our main focus on adapting, is to stay dope. You know what I mean? And I like our man Jaw. I had a security says all the time, be like water, and your style gotta be that. You can hear Run the Jewels on Run the Jewels shit. You can hear us on some FIFA shit. You can hear us on the Static Selector shit. You can hear us on Big Boy shit. You know, it's coming up and we get this time in. We gonna know some like Bun B shit. Like our shit is just, man, you wanna make your style dope. We don't even rap the same on records on our album. And if I got any advice, how old cats always be trying to talk to young cats is, fuck all that other shit everybody else saying. Stay styling on their style. ass. Yeah. Style. And that's, and that's it. Stay when you live style. your life, when you live your creative life ahead of the curve too. When, 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 you know, me and Mike, you know, spent a long time being, you know, kind of trying to attempt to do shit kind of ahead of what was happening. And by the time it kind of leveled out, we found ourselves in a sweet spot where people were trying to hear what we were saying. But it's a rarity. We never lost our hunger. We ne we never stopped trying to be better at what we were doing. And once we, when we were always grinding, always putting music out. So by the time we looked up and we were 40, <laughs> and, and all of a sudden we were blowing up and it was like, oh, okay. Like I didn't even, we didn't even think about it. Got that like fifth wave. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You go yeah. hard, you go hard. Yeah, style. and like, just speaking of style then, and, and what, what you just said, I remember when I heard the first project, I heard Sea Legs. And then I heard that, that line on another song where you're like, I won with the elegance of an African elephant. <laughs> and I thought, the bars that you spit were so tight, both of them were so tight, but you, your sound on on his production, I feel like you're supposed to be together, it shined. Right? Yeah, <laughs> you shined in another way that I've never heard you shine before. Yeah, thank and how you. did you feel? I agree. I know, um, I know you guys met via the Cartoon Network. Yeah. Am, is that correct? Well, a friend of ours who works at, yeah, who works right. there, yeah. Um, so, how do you feel his production is? Did you, how did it bring? All, it's just, all honestly, man, it's like me and my wife joke. I'm um, in two marriages, right? Yeah. And I knew I wanted to marry her in two weeks. Shit, I knew we were supposed to be making music together in two days. Yeah. Like within two days, knowing LP, I was like, yo, you gotta produce my whole album, and probably every album after that. Like I, I have a style. Speaking of style, that is born out of. Um, Ice Cube, Scarface, and Ghetto Mafia, and Dayton Family, mixed with Chuck D and KRS-One, you know what I'm saying, and K Reno. So everybody doesn't get it, everybody can't get it, and I don't know if we were even looking to get it, but when I heard it, I knew it, you know what I mean? And when I heard, and when I heard us on it together, I knew it even more, so, you know, I'm, real, I'm blessed real quickly, to it. We realized that we had a lot of the same influences, and I understood to the, to the core of what Mike's influences were. And some of the stuff that I didn't grow up with that because it was more regional and you know, was stuff that I was already really into and interested in and, and, and appreciative of. And, and so our musical worlds kind of coming together, there was a core of it really being like the same. You know, all of those artists that you could, everything that he can say, all of the history of it, I already knew like, yes, of course, like this is, but there were also things that I brought to the table that he brought to the table that kind of melted that, that gave us openings for our styles too. You know what I mean? To kind of like become something new. And um, so I like the fact that you can listen to our records and you can hear each of our influences, but you can't look at a Run The Jewels record and be like, this is an East Coast rap album, or this is a Southern rap album, you know? This is an underground rap album, or this is a, you know, it's not woke, but it's also not fucking stupid. And it's also not, you know, it's like, I just, I, I think that was, that was one of the great things that emanated from our influences crossing over was right. we didn't have, we, we, we've always gotten each other from the minute. Musically, we always got each other, like right from the jump. You know? yeah. Yeah. And like in the, the genre bend, so like your, your production is so gritty and it's like, it is, it is genre bending in a way. And it, it kind of puts you in, which is why you're a headliner for this show. This is our first like sister show. Go 96.3 is the alternative station and Go 95.3 is the hip hop station. Cool. We thought cool. you were the perfect headliner for that because awesome. the sound is perfect. So. As far as like, like you know, kind of genre bending, is there like you said they collaborated with? Um, oh, with Zach Delarocha, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Who outside of I mean him? That was Ray Jazz was saying who they're like you know they're like yeah. punk rap. They're kind of like it's still like he rapped on that. Sure, sure. Yeah. But outside of your genre, 
which genres are dying, honestly. But, yeah, but I you agree. can pick anyone. And that's a good thing. Yeah, that's Jazzy, great. Yeah. Jazzy Jeff said something amazing about it. He's like, yo, if you go to a record store, it should just be alphabetical. Right. Yeah, because yeah, genres, genres were created from by record stores to sell their music and categorize sure. That's why it was created. Yeah. But if you could like reach outside of the hip-hop spectrum and collab with anyone else. Well, I've done a lot of work. Reach- I've been lucky in my career, personally, just uh, on some production shit and on some collaborative shit. I've worked with everyone from Mars Volta and Trent Reznor to, wow. you know, um, Beck to, you know, um, uh, you know, I've, I've just, uh, shit, Sean Marshall, Cat Power, like, I've, I've always, I've always been ex- um, really pleased that, that, that sort of I've had some reach in, the, in different genres and music scenes, because I listen to all that shit. I listen to music. I'm a music fan, and I, I my shit is basically alphabetical. You know, it's like I just hit shuffle, <laughs> and, and and so um, that's always been a part of what we do. And even on the records, you know, we always, uh, you know, I've I've been lucky enough to bring in some friends, and you know, people like Zach, and you know. Mike brought in Travis Barker. He was good friends with Travis Barker, and just there, there's a whole music scene out there that has been really accepting of I think both of us in our whole careers, and really would run the jewels in a big way too. You know, um, we 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 don't for some reason our music doesn't seem to scare people from different genres away. It kind of piques their interest. You know, we just opened up for Queens of the Stone Age last night. Oh, hell you know, yeah. Where? and they're friends of mine, but um, at, uh, in in uh, in Chicago. Yeah. So it and it worked. You know what I mean. So, on paper, you might not think that, but me and Mike been dealing with that since we first hooked up. When you put the words LP and Killer Mike together originally, like you said, everyone was like, "That's a terrible idea." What are you talking about? Like you know, and they don't talk that shit anymore. So, I think I would probably do this band who I've already worked with called When Saints Go Machine. I do like a little small EP or something with them because their music is so dark and bluesy and moody. I wouldn't even suit to do like two or three verses. I do just like eights and twelves or throw a sixteen there and let it just be a part of the record. Mm-hmm. Um, when Porter's Head did Dummy, I would have loved to have had Jeff Barrows for the same type of thing went, went there for like that little, just little dark moment. And when Trent Reznor was doing like, like with Maryland, I don't know if he did Beautiful People, but like right around that Beautiful People time in Maryland, and right around that uh, that Lost Highway moment when Trent, I'm a fan of Trent anyway, but those particular beats, I would have loved to have been in that moment. So those, and Zeppelin, I would have loved to be time travel and yeah. get fucked up and just been in that. <laughs> Zeppelin one to just have been in the room, freestyling in the corner, you don't have to be a project, just fucking around in the corner. So. That's Prince. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yes, you're in Minneapolis. Like I sit and I freestyle, like I drive to Zeppelin and Savage's first album and rap, start rapping over the words. Like I got Ghostface with you. Oh yeah, yeah. But if you, if you didn't get sued like shit today, I might release one. <laughs> <laughs> just go Instagram live and just do it. That's a great idea. I didn't see it.